It was August 18th, the year 1945. Around 2pm, a plane crash was reported in Taihoku Air Base, breaking the craft into two parts. The main pilot and a lieutenant general on board died instantaneously, but it was Bose and his aide Rahman who attempted to run and exit from the front door. Local ground staff close by managed to smother the flames and took them to the Nanmen military hospital that was nearby. As for the hospital reports, it is said both were burned so badly that no one would have been able to identify them. Within a few hours, both went into coma and it was Dr. Yoshimi who declared Subhas Chandra Bose dead. Officially, on the 18th of August 1945, Bose was declared dead at the age of 48 and his body was cremated in the Taihoku crematorium three days post this crash. On the 23rd of August 1945, Japanese news agencies announced this death to the world and on 13th of September, a memorial service was held for Bose in Tokyo. A few days later, his ashes were kept at the Renkoji Temple. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the history as far as everyone in the world knows. But what intrigues Minama are contradictory reports and viewings. A few reports suggest that this was a pre-planned stage accident by Bose himself which helped him escape from Japan. All this was done keeping India's struggle for independence from the British in mind. You must remember, Bose was leading the fight for freedom from the front as the chief of the Azad Hind force with the support of Japan. Also remember that just three days before the plane crash on the 15th of August 1945, Japan surrendered ending World War II. This surrender was shocking for Indians and fully aware that the British would take advantage and delay Indian independence, both planned to disappear with perfect mastery and the help of some Japanese officials. When rumors of Bose's death started making the rounds, Prime Minister Nehru appointed a three-man committee headed by Shah Nawaz Khan and interviewed 67 witnesses in India Japan and other locations, including the hospital and the plane crash site, and concluded that Bose had died in the plane crash. It was soon opposed by Suresh Chandra Bose, brother of Bose, who rejected to sign reports because he said Jawaharlal Nehru was forcing the committee to declare that Bose had died in that crash. Something was indeed fishy here. In 1970, the government appointed the one-man Khosla committee to inquire into the disappearance. But of course, this committee took reports of the Shah Nawaz committee and concluded that Bose had died in the crash. It is believed that when the Khosla committee was at work, many confidential files belonging to the Bose case disappeared and were completely destroyed. Many people believe Bose came to India after independence where he changed his identity as Gumnami Baba in the guise of a spiritual monk. After the death of this Baba, many belongings were found, including family photographs, posts, letters and gifts given by his sister. When forensic experts examined all the belongings, they found many similarities between Bose and this Baba. And also experts found a 100% match of English and Bengali handwriting by the war hero and the spiritual Baba. This caused many eyebrows to be raised. And under rising pressure, a new committee called the Mukherjee Commission was formed in the year 2005. In May 2006, this commission concluded that Subhas Chandra Bose did not die in the 1945 plane crash. The committee went one step ahead to declare that his death was staged to allow Bose a safe passage to USSR with the help of the Japanese government and the Habibur Rahmanji. Gumnami Baba could well have been Bose in disguise. 
and his ashes at the Japanese temple was not of him but a Japanese soldier. The Indian government and ruling Congress party rejected the findings of the Mukherjee Commission. But this inquiry brought to light many incidents and proofs of Subhash Chandra being alive in Russia post-1945 and the entire world woke up to a brand new mystery. Where was Subhash Chandra Bose? The ardent rejection from Congress government makes us suspicious that if the world actually found the truth of this hero, the whole country would have forgotten Gandhi, Nehru and other Congress leaders and Bose would have indeed become the true hero of India's independence. As India celebrates its 75th year of independence, let us remember the real war hero of our independence, the great Subhash Chandra Bose. This is a very special episode dedicated to India and its freedom struggle and to the enigma and the mystery of the death of its greatest hero. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was a legend, the war hero of the country, a true son of the soil, who sacrificed his identity in the interest of his motherland. Never forget to shout his name out loud, along with all our freedom fighters. But when you take this name, Subhash Chandra Bose, let your heart be filled with pride. The death of this hero will remain an enigma. But then, great leaders and war heroes never die. They live in our hearts forever. Long live Netaji. Long live Hindustan, my motherland. If you like the content of this video, do like and subscribe to my channel, Meet Ninamma. Don't forget to click the bell icon for regular updates. Also, do comment and interact with Minamma. I would love your opinions. Minamma looks forward to meeting you again in the next video and episode. Let us together take a long journey into yet another mystery that intrigues me. Till then, ladies and gentlemen, have a great life and make a difference. Oi, 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 Mina Ma.